Welcome everybody to our time of evening prayer on this Friday the 26th of February. Today is an ember day and on ember days we set aside time for prayer for vocations and for those who serve the church in different ministries. Traditionally they're observed on the Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays in the weeks before the third Sunday of Advent. And so during our prayers today, we will pray for those vocations and for some of those people who are currently training for different vocations in our diocese. And so we begin our evening prayer with our prayers of preparation as normal. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgments, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin, you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow in your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever that this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our heart and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We have two appointed psalms for this evening prayer, psalm number 54 and psalm number 55. And so we begin with psalm number 54. Save me, O God, by your name, and vindicate me by your power. Hear my prayer, O God, give heed to the words of my mouth. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless seek after my life. They have not set God before them. Behold, God is my helper. It is the Lord who upholds my life. May evil rebound on those who lie in wait for me. Destroy them in your faithfulness. An offering of a free heart will I give you. And praise your name, O Lord, for it is gracious. For he has delivered me out of all trouble, and my eye has seen the downfall of my enemies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our second psalm is number 55. Hear my prayer, O God, hide not yourself from my petition. Give heed to me and answer me, I am restless in my complaining. I am alarmed at the voice of the enemy and at the clamour of the wicked, for they would bring down evil upon me and are set against me in fury. My heart is disquieted within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearful, fearfulness and trembling are come upon me, and a horrible dread has overwhelmed me. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Then would I flee far away and make my lodging in the wilderness. I would make haste to escape from the stormy wind and tempest. Confuse their tongues, O Lord, and divide them, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about on her walls, mischief and trouble are in her midst. Wickedness walks in her street, oppression and guile never leave her squares. For it was not an open enemy that reviled me, for then I could have borne it. Nor was it my adversary that puffed himself up against me, for then I would have hid myself from him. But it was even you, one like myself, my companion and my own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together and walked with the multitude in the house of God. Let death come suddenly upon them, let them go down alive to the pit, for wickedness inhabits their dwelling, their very hearts. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord will deliver me. In the evening and morning and at noonday, I will pray and make my supplication, and he shall hear my voice. He shall redeem my soul in peace from the battle waged against me, for many have come upon me. God, who is enthroned of old, will hear and bring them down. They will not repent, for they have no fear of God. My compassion stretched out his hands against, my companion stretched out his hands against his friend and has broken his covenant. 
His speech was softer than butter, though war was in his heart. His words were smoother than oil, and yet they naked swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you, and will not let the righteous fall for ever. For those that are bloodthirsty and deceitful, O God, you will bring down to the pit of destruction. They shall not live out half their days, but my trust shall be in you, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading from Scripture is from Genesis chapter 42, verses 29 to the end. When they came to their father, Jacob, in the land of Canaan, they told him that all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the Lord of the land, spoke harshly to us and charged us with spying on the land. But we said to him, We are honest men, we are not spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more, and the youngest is now with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the Lord of this land, said to us, By this I shall know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers with me. Take grain for the famine of your household, and go your way. Bring your youngest brother to me, and I shall know that you are not spies, but honest men. Then I will release your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. As they were emptying their sacks, there in each one's sack was his bag of money. When they and their father saw their bundles of money, they were dismayed. And their father Jacob said to them, I am the one you have bereaved of children. Joseph is no more, and Simeon is no more. And now you would take Benjamin. All this has happened to me. Then Reuben said to his father, You may kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. Put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he alone is left. If harm should come to him on the journey that you are to make, you would bring down my grey hairs with sorrow to Sheol. This is the end of our first lesson. And our canticle, A Song of Christ the Servant. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted himself to God who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Our second reading from Scripture is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to the end. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit is desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Here ends our second reading and our responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord. 
Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. And the Magnificat. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has generation to generation. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit. Casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly, he has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Come, let us return to the Lord, for our God will richly pardon. And so we come to our time of intercession. Let us pray. In penitence and faith, let us make our prayer to the Father and ask for his mercy and grace. For your holy people, that they may triumph over evil and grow in grace. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. For candidates for baptism and confirmation, that they may live by every word that proceeds from your mouth. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. For the readers of the nation, that you will guide them in the ways of mercy and truth. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. For the needy, that they may not be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. We pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick in body, mind and spirit, that they may know your power to heal, we pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. For the poor in spirit, that they may inherit the kingdom of heaven and see you face to face, we pray to you, O Lord, hear our prayer. Let us commend the world for which Christ suffered to the mercy and protection of God. Today, in our worldwide calendar of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Arkansas in the Episcopal Church in the United States of America. In our own diocesan calendar of prayer, we pray for the Allen Mission Area this month and for Paulette Gower, their Mission Area Leader. We pray for Archdeacon John, Archdeacon of Wrexham, and always include in our prayers Bishop Gregory for his ministry for and among us. Lord, we remember before you all those in need of our prayers at this time, those who have asked us to pray for them and those who have nobody to pray for them. We remember Colin and all people in nursing and residential homes, for Daniel and all those in prison and for their families. We pray for the work of our local chaplains, for Alan and the chaplaincy team at HMP Berwyn, for Jane and the chaplaincy team at the Myla Hospital. We pray for the COVID vaccination program, program across this land and across the world. We pray for those in any part of that program, in development, in research, in administration. Remembering the development team here in Wrexham and also the research team in the North Wales Centre for Research in Wrexham. We pray for those known to us at this time who are sick, for Sue, Richard, Tim, Louise, Derek, Joanne, Mo, Betty, Malcolm, Charlotte, Mal, Edwin, Gordon, James, Margaret, Sophie, Anne, Doreen and Nancy. We pray for those who are bereaved at this time, for Sharon and Peter and their family, for Mark and his family, for Barbara and her family, for Kath, Katie, Mike and Helen and their family, for Lucy and for her family. And we pray for our dearly departed loved ones, 
those whose anniversary of death falls at this time, and those who are recently departed, among them Glyn, Cynthia, Philip, Sarah, Phil, Jesse, and Gladys. Lord, we pray for all those called to service in your church on this ember day. God our Father, you called Abraham and Moses to lead your people into a promised land and fill them with your spirit. Raise up leaders for your church in this generation who will make your word known and be faithful stewards of your mysteries, that your people may be nourished with the word of life and the bread of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray for those who are currently exploring their vocation and our team of vocation advisors in this diocese, for vocations to the ordained ministry from younger candidates, and for those who will exercise leadership in the church of the future as we face the coming retirement of a large proportion of our clergy, for vocations to the newer licensed lay ministries, for pioneer, evangelist, pastoral chaplain, children, youth and family workers for an increase in commitment to discipleship and Christian maturity, for all the people of God in churches across our diocese as we seek to serve God in a variety of contexts, work, home, community, church, for candidates attending provincial and regional conferences over the next few weeks, and those involved as discerners. We pray for those who are currently in training for ministry, for their families, and for St. Padan's Institute. And we pray for those who had ordained the diaconate in 2020. Lord, as you called your disciples, call us now. Open our ears to listen to your calling. Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to love to your love. Help us to hear you, to you experience your presence with us and to love you and loving you. Let us serve you our servant king. Amen. And our colleague for today. Almighty God, whose son Jesus Christ fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your spirit. And as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so, trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me here from St Giles today. And just by way of reminder... Our Lenten group continues to meet this coming Wednesday at 6pm on Zoom. And if you'd like the details of those and have not received them, then please feel free to email Jason or myself at any point and we'll make sure that we get them to you. Our Sunday services this Sunday follow the same pattern that they have of late with our Zoom service for our all-age worship at half past nine, our separate recorded sermon slot and our recorded partially sung Eucharist on Sunday morning.